Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about geometric probability. So, the general equation to find the probability of an event occurring is shown by this formula here. So we have the number of favorable outcomes in the numerator and the number of possible outcomes in the denominator. Now the geometric probability is going to be slightly different. It usually is the same kind of, uh, it follows the same formula, but we use length or areas, so geometric principles, to find the probability. All right, so let's look at some examples. Example one says point S lies on AD is chosen at random. Find the probability that S is on the segment BC. So we know that S is somewhere between A and D. We want the probability that S lies right in between BC. So now we don't have any numbers to go off of. We can't really assume uh, the fraction of AD that BC is. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use a simple formula and come up with our answer. So the probability that S is on BC is going to be equal to the length of BC over the length, the total length, which is AD. So that's it. We don't have any numbers, so that uh, example is just as simple as that. All right, now let's look at what happens when we do have some numbers on our line. So we have point K on ST is chosen at random, so from 2 all the way to 14. What is the probability that K lies on QR? So I want to know the probability that K is in between QR. So we have probability that K lies on QR. When we write probabilities, we always want to put P and then in parentheses what we're looking for. All right, and then the length of QR from 5 to 8 is 3, and the total length from 2 to 14 is 12. So the probability is going to be 1 fourth or 25%. All right, example three, a commuter train runs every 25 minutes. If a commuter arrives at the station at a random time, what is the probability that the commuter will have to wait no more than five minutes? So we have 25 minutes total. We don't want to wait for any more than five minutes. So if we draw a picture of what's going on, here's zero minutes, and here's the train showing up at 25. We can break this into uh, 5, 10, 15, and 20. So equal pieces here, or almost equal. Let's make that equal there. All right. And we want to know what's the probability that if I get to the station, I'm only going to wait in this section between 0 and 5. So probability of waiting no more than 5 minutes is going to be equal to the length of that time, which is five minutes, out of the total length, 25, or one-fifth. So a lot of these problems are going to be pretty simple uh, and quick. All right, now let's look at what happens when we talk about area. So those were length probabilities. Now let's talk about area. So the probability that a point S lies in a region, so in the area of a region, is going to be represented by doing the area of the desired region over the area of the total or the entire region. All right, so let's look at two examples here. First one says a triangle is inscribed in a square. So I know if it's a square, all four sides are the same. Point T in the square is selected at random. What's the probability that it lies in the shaded region? So probability of our shaded region, of our point lying in our shaded region is going to be the area of the square, area of the square, uh, I'm sorry, area of the triangle, or shaded, well, okay, to get our shaded region, we want the area of the square minus the area of the triangle to get that shaded piece, all right, over the total area, which is the square. So here's kind of a, a basic idea of what we're going to do. So area of the square is going to be 25 inches squared minus the area of our triangle, which is 1 half of 5 base times height, which is 5, all over 25. And then we want to simplify this. So we have 25 minus half of 25 is 12 and a half over 25 simplifies to 12 and a half over 25, which then simplifies to 1 half. 
Uh, try not to mix decimals inside of fractions. You'll always want to keep going until you have a whole number over a whole number for your fraction to be simplified. All right, and our last example, a little bit more going on here. So suppose you have a simple dartboard shown uh, here. The small circle has a radius of three inches. So let's start drawing on our picture. Small circle has a radius of three inches and each section, section also has a width of three. So that means our medium circle is gonna have a radius of six and our large circle is going to have a radius of nine. So each one is three units. Assuming the dart lands on the board, that you have some skill involved here, uh, find the probability that it lands in the outer ring, the middle ring, and the inner ring, or the inner circle. So let's talk about our circles and then our rings. So we're going to kind of do this step by step. So let's find the area of the big circle, the large circle, not the ring, but the circle itself. So my radius is 9, 9 squared times pi is going to be 81 pi. Area of my medium circle is going to be 6 squared pi, so 36 pi. And the area of our small circle is 3 squared pi, which is 9 pi. And of course, we have uh, inches squared on each one of these. Now let's talk about the rings. So to get the area of the large ring, I want to take the area of the large circle and subtract the other two pieces but I don't really know the middle ring yet. So really what I can think of is just the large circle minus the middle circle because inside the middle circle, we have all of the white space and the, the uh, shaded circle in the very center. So that's going to give us the outer ring. So area of the outer ring is going to be 81 pi minus 36 pi. And then simplifying that, we get 45 pi inches squared. So there is the area of my outer ring. Now area of the middle ring is going to be the medium circle, which is 36 pi minus, oops, minus the inner circle, which is nine pi. So now we have 27 pi inches squared. And then the area of our small is actually the same uh, circle as the one we've already calculated, so that's 9 pi inches squared. Now that we have all of our areas, we can start finding our probability. So the probability of the outer ring is going to be the area of the outer ring, 45 pi, divided by the area of the entire board, which is the large circle, which was 81 pi. And we want to simplify that, we get 5 ninths. Now notice, I had units on my areas, on top and bottom, inches squared, inches squared, but I'm not including units on my probability because probability is just a percentage. It's just a fraction of the whole thing. So we don't want to include any units on our probability, only on the area portions. All right, now the probability of getting it on the middle ring is going to be the area of the middle ring, 27 pi inches squared, over, again, the total area, 81 pi inches squared. And simplifying that, we end up with 3 ninths. So our probability of getting our dart in the middle ring is smaller than the outer ring. All right, and then the probability of our inner circle is 9 pi over 81 pi, which is going to be 1 ninth. So a lot smaller to get our, our dart in the center of the dartboard dart uh, than the other pieces. Now, let's look at this. It asks us, what do you notice about the sum of the probabilities? If I take 5 ninths plus 3 ninths plus 1 ninth, what do I get? Well, I get 9 ninths, which is 1. And the reason that we end up with 1 when we add these all together is because if I take the outer ring, the middle ring, and the inner circle, and I put them all together, I get the entire board. So this is 100% of the board which is why it's one. So remember, when you're doing probabilities and you end up with probabilities that all add up to the entire figure, we wanna make sure that we did it correctly, check to make sure all your probabilities add up to 100%. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.